Okay. Is this doable in your car? <laughs> Yeah, with the construction outside of Regis? I think anything's doable yeah, with so you and I. This, this <laughs> is what happens when you have an iPhone camera and your long arm <laughs> is long enough to capture. You end up in the car because there's construction outside of the place Clear, we were supposed clearly. to be talking. But you know, I mean, you know, when it comes to us, we could talk anywhere. This is true. We do talk <laughs> anywhere and everywhere and in the Prius. Yes. So today we're talking about Elizabeth's new book, which is Baby Steps. Which, I'm going to try not to cover your face. <laughs> you, can cover, your you can cover my face. So, and I we're was, drinking green juice. And we're drinking rejuice, of course, because it's like the rejuice, you know. Parking lot. Talk. The rejuice tack time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so I thought this was going to be a book about IVF. And it actually is just such a inspirational book about being a woman. I was so... Impre I was like really blown away by this book. Oh my god. No, Thank it's you. really true. Thank you. It's really true. So, okay, tell me how it started. Why did you want to tell this story? And um, what's the rea what's been the reaction to it, too? Like, what are people saying about it? And you know, when you go out and promote a book, you've got about five seconds of people's time. So Unless you're in the Prius. Unless you're in the Prius and you can talk <laughs> for about an hour. <laughs> um, you know, the the reason I wrote the book was to make a call to action, to bring a higher consciousness and an awareness to, I think, a silence around infertility mm -hmm. that I suffered from, and that I think not only just women suffer from, but men, but since I'm a woman, my focus is women. Right. And I, you know, having gotten um, terrible news at 34 that I was never going to be able to have a child naturally, I didn't feel a lot of support in my world because you know a lot of people don't talk about it most people don't and as I had this platform of writing a blog for people.com you know a couple of other actors or public figures started speaking about their fertility issues one of them was Nicole Kidman she came out mm -hmm. about using a surrogate and that really touched my heart and I thought you know what is this what is this secret it's not like I'm serving anyone I mean there was a moment in my personal life, in my family, where I came out to everybody about it, that served a cousin of mine, and I ended up telling, and it's in the book. It's in here. Yeah. And I want to read it. And you know, I think she really is very moved that she was a great inspiration for me, because she was suffering, and I don't think she really likes talking about it, but she talked to us about it, so then we, you know, ended up really having this cathartic, you know, um, connection over it and I think that was very healing for both of us it continues to be healing for both yeah. of us because now the books come out and she sees I'm going from place to place talking about it so the cat's out of the bag you right. know if you have fertility issues there's nothing to be ashamed of um, you're not broken you're not a, a less of a woman you don't have a broken body but you have those feelings why because this n natural God-given gift you have to conceive that makes you distinctively uh, female right uh, suddenly is being taken away from you and a doctor has to step in and help you conceive which feels like the cruelest uh, the cruelest chapter you could go through if you really have this baby lust and yeah you know ultimately I you know I ended up blogging about it on people and the outpouring of reactions from men and women and letters and comments on the blog and then letters sent to me about, you know, I don't know, somebody in Australia telling me that they'd done seven cycles of fertility treatments mm. and I thought... It's so brutal. Yeah. And there, it really is. There's this need, I mean, this, this release that people were having through reaching out to me and telling me their stories. I thought, okay, there's a need to crack this open and yeah. say, one day I really hope that fertility issues get the attention they deserve, that research is done, that make, you know, makes more advancements. I hope that what happened with, you know, breast cancer is what happens with fertility. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I really want women in their early 30s to start getting really proactive on yeah. behalf of themselves. But you can't write, you know, I don't know how many pages are in this book. You can't write over 200 pages. 240 <laughs> something. You can't write, um... You can't write 200 and something pages about fertility. I mean, at the end of the day, this is an extension of my blog. And my blog yeah. is about other things and it's not just about fertility. But the heart and soul of why I even sat down and put pen to paper was because I, I want women at 30 to start getting their hormone levels checked, their ovarian reserve checked, and really just be advocates of themselves. And yeah. then the men need to be advocates of us. Totally. And then things change. So one of the issues that... One of the things that you and I have talked about is the environmental impact on, you know, us as women, as mothers, and also infertility. It's not something that you touch on in the book necessarily, 
but I know it's something that you feel personally. I mean, is how how does that influence what you think about um, the s- sustainability movement and you know, like all of that? How does that all fit together for you? I think when you look back um, to the time when there were less fertility issues because women were getting pregnant earlier. I think uh, the tipping point is around 35 when women really, really could be running into a, a, a gray area of mm-hmm. fertility and definitely as they get into their 40s, not to say you know, that women can't get pregnant at 40, 46, miracles happen every day. Um, but that time when women were getting pregnant, I think more easily, also coincides with a time when we were a less toxic environment. Yeah. And it doesn't um, ever not cross my mind. Yeah. But I'm not a scientist and I don't know and I don't know if the toxicity in the world um, has an effect on our fertility. I wouldn't be surprised if the ultimate answer is yes, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, I don't particularly uh, advocate living a toxic life. I want to be, you know, as green as possible. Oh, and totally. I have fertility issues. So, right. you know, if I'm, you know, eating organic food and there, you know, all are only all natural products at my house, my daughter is, you know, you know, wearing organic clothing and I try to do that as well. And we're in a Prius and we try to walk and bike and we turn out, you know, if we don't waste water and we live this life and we try to do the best we can with that consciousness and, and I still can't get pregnant, I don't really know what the answer is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, you know, that's something that is definitely here and is something that, you know, infuses everything. I mean, I just recently wrote about, um, links between Teflon and infertility and you know that's something that obviously like you're already doing right is not using you know non-stick pans like those are things that you're doing naturally but then we look back and think oh those things are linked to different issues that we have you know and and um so why not just start out being as clean as we possibly can be you know yes absolutely but it doesn't mean that you own it and I love like I love so you write in this I want to read it it says every woman's body tells a story And whether or not you've been handed motherhood on a silver platter is all part of that story. So for me, I was handed motherhood on a silver platter, you know? I got pregnant, I was 27 years old, you know? And and I got lucky. And now so many of my friends are just struggling, you know? And it kills me. And I do feel, at the time, I didn't feel like um, it was unusual. But now I feel like I was so blessed and so lucky to have it have been easy. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, outside of the fact that it's going to cost a fortune if you run into fertility issues and that it's likely none of it will be covered, not even a part of it will be covered by insurance. Now you're turning into, I mean, I was lucky. I, we could afford to write that check. Not that it didn't hurt, and I talk about writing. Oh, yeah. You know, I talk about that in the book. I mean, it's not like anyone. I couldn't just write a check for $25,000 and without a blink of an eye, and it was definitely a struggle at that time because I was off law and order, and I was like, oh. But there are people who really can't write yeah, that check, and they mortgage course. their house, and yeah. it, it throws, and all they want is to have a baby, and they'll do whatever it takes to have that baby, and I totally understand that. So I think also cracking this subject open and making this something that we all talk about, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully will lead to it being covered. I think fertility issues are medical concerns. I think that you have a disease, mm-hmm. and you know it should be treated as such. So the I camera's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> it should be cheap. We're so serious and yet we're tilting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just was, my arm is about to fall off. Oh, okay. Take, take, take the reins, I'll Elizabeth. Awesome. Oh. oh, my shoulder. No, I totally agree. And I do think that, um, you know, like the great thing about this book is it's birth, it's death, it's your relationship with your mother, it's right. your relationship with your daughter. And it really sp- spoke to me on all of those levels. So yeah. I hope that even people who aren't struggling with with infertility I hope will will read it you know yeah, what I, I mean? think that's like, the tricky part is that you know because the the reason to write it was because I wanted to get um, the story out there and to get the conversation going for mm-hmm. women and with men um, I I find that the book is be, you know lost sometimes behind that because many women don't have fertility issues Mm -hmm. and I do think you know the the book was more I was more inspired to write a book that was inspirational for women that all women could relate to yeah mothers and And daughters and loss and you know all that stuff and my thumb just went over the camera (laughs) (laughs) whatever we're making a movie totally we're making a movie it's a 50 million dollar film (laughs) check us out 
We could do a movie on this iPhone right now. Absolutely. Dialogue. Let's do it. Right. Where's the thing? I don't know. Clap, clap, clap. clap. Um, but yeah, I think that there are issues about body and, and death and your confidence and being a holistic person. And ultimately, I, you know, being a woman is the greatest experience and yet it's complicated. Yeah. We're hard on ourselves. We're, we're, we're emotional. We're deep. We're thinkers. We're communicators. And if we don't communicate with each other about absolutely everything, we're doing a disservice Totally. And, and again, you know, not talking about fertility issues really is a sin of omission. When we as women collectively know whether, you know, it's a friend of ours that couldn't get pregnant or ourselves, if we don't speak about it, if we don't ask our friends to talk about mm -hmm. it, then we're not being advocates of each other because we're really at a time where it's, you know, it's so prevalent and it's still this sort of dirty little yeah. secret. It's oh. taboo. And anyone suffering from it doesn't... Like you feel like you failed. Yeah. It's the same thing like breast cancer was. You know, you felt like you failed as a woman. You lost your breasts. It's like those yeah. are so symbolic. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. So yeah. thank you for sharing you too. this with me and with women. And hopefully, you know, next time we'll have not a Prius as our location. I think a Prius <laughs> is a great location. Yourself. We're advocates of being green. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Talk thank to you, you. soon, okay. Elizabeth. Ciao.